It's been a while since we've heard from Cardinal Mueller, aside from endorsing Archbishop Vigano's statement that caused controversy in the last couple of weeks. Cardinal Mueller gave an interview recently where he endorsed essentially what those of us who find ourselves more and more on the fringe of commentary have been saying about this current crisis, that it is being exploited by wicked men to implement an evil program. He rejects the notion that pointing this out is to engage in what I like to call wild alternative hypotheses involving tinfoil headgear. But he says that what we're seeing unfolding is so patently obvious and evil that all people of goodwill should object to what's going on. So Vigano Appeal contained these wild hypotheses of secretive plans as an attempt to marginalize free thinkers before getting into the real meat of the matter, which is the attempt to dismiss Vigano and people like him as a dangerous, unhinged promoter of panic. Quoting Cardinal Mueller, I do not understand the text as meaning that the affliction was invented to create panic, but that the measures taken against it must be strictly related to the affliction, and that political and economic interests must not be mixed up with it. In any case, the threat has been made publicly that 7 billion people will be forcibly inoculated, even if the drugs have not yet been sufficiently tested, and that if people are not complying, fundamental rights will be withdrawn from them. No one can be forced to believe that a few philanthropic super billionaires have the best programs for world improvement just because they have succeeded in accumulating a huge private fortune. Or another problem. A certain amount of public surveillance to prevent and solve crimes is ethically justified, but by no means a total control of privacy. End quote. Mueller is asked by his German investigate interviewer if the governments from across the spectrum really are seeking to curtail or abolish human rights in this crisis. Mueller's response is golden, quote, Should I now say by naively and blindly believing the authorities that everyone only has only the best motives in mind? Do not see everything only from a German perspective. America, and the country of Phil- that the affliction came from, are now blaming each other and perhaps are taking questionable measures that have nothing to do with the crisis. In some countries, unfortunately, party politics is still being pursued even in this crisis. So far, in some places, the primacy of ethics over party politics remains a pious hope. End quote. Imagine a situation where the political parties work together in this crisis to find a common solution, which would thus reinforce public opinion that maybe our ruling class actually cared. I know, it sounds unbelievable, like some pie-in-the-sky dream of a utopian solution to our problems. But in reality, that is what Cardinal Mueller seems to be calling for, even when pointing out that the absurdity of what we're seeing happen from our so-called leaders. Now, he is accused by his interviewer of overstepping his authority as a bishop by signing Vigano's statement. This is worth reflecting on. I'm sure by now you've noticed a concerted effort to marginalize those who would dare to take a different stand on the current crisis, who would dare to suggest that the official narrative is in any way false, or that the official measures taken have been too much. Cardinal Mueller, in his role as a Cardinal Archbishop of the Catholic Church, is being grilled here for his endorsement of a text that frankly points out the obvious. Here is Mueller's response to that grilling, quote, The paper, not a single line in it, was written by me. But 30,000 people have so far supported it in the general direction of its aims with their signatures, without carefully examining every sentence individually. Many physicians and other scientists have also helped write it. But it also has to do with the theology that, despite the respect for the autonomy of the secular realms, we must also talk about an ethics of economics, politics, and medicine. Here I refer to the Second Vatican Council and its constitution, Gaudium et Spes, paragraph 36, end quote. Now, I'm not wild about documents from the Second Vatican Council, to put it mildly, and I, yes, I have read them, but here's the paragraph he's citing, for some context, quote, Now many of our contemporaries seem to fear that a closer bond between human activity and religion will work against the independence of men, of societies, or of the sciences. If by the autonomy of earthly affairs we mean that created things and societies themselves enjoy their own laws and values which must be gradually deciphered, put to use and regulated by men, that it is entirely right to demand that autonomy. Such is not merely required by modern man, but harmonizes also with the will of the Creator. For by the very circumstances of their having been created, all things are endowed with their own stability, truth, goodness, proper laws, and order. 
Man must respect these as he isolates them by the appropriate methods of the individual sciences or arts. Therefore, if methodical investigation within every branch of learning is carried out in a genuinely scientific manner and in accord with moral norms, it never truly conflicts with faith, for earthly matters and the concerns of faith derive from the same God. Indeed, whoever labors to penetrate the secrets of reality with a humble and steady mind, even though he is un unaware of the fact, is nevertheless being led by the hand of God, who holds all things in existence and gives them their identity. Consequently, we cannot but deplore certain habits of mind, which are sometimes found too among Christians, which do not sufficiently attend to the rightful independence of science, and which, from the arguments and controversies they spark, lead many minds to include that the faith and science are mutually opposed. End quote. In other words, the silencing of peoples in this crisis threatens our God-given right to ask basic questions of our rulers and our God-given duty to pursue the truth, and that, yes, we do have duties to our rulers, and every, but at the end of the day, everything comes from God. I know it's a shocking statement from the Cardinal, and I'm certain that his interviewer wasn't pleased with it if he bothered to look up the passage in question. Instead, the interviewer pivots and asks why Cardinal Mueller is opposed to the banning of the sacraments if he recognizes the autonomy of the German state and other governments to enact public safety measures. Mueller's response is worth heeding, quote, Religious freedom and the autonomy of the church and her spiritual and sacramental life have constitutional status in Germany and elsewhere, and are among the fundamental human rights. The Catholic Church respects the competence of the state for the common good, and does not claim to be a state within a state. But the state only has the right to demand the necessary safety measures at worship gatherings, but not to prohibit the liturgy and the sacraments in and of themselves. In non-democratic states, public gatherings are currently allowed, but only worship services continue to be banned, if one can believe the media reports. If, despite all the dangers, the basic physical and medical care of the population is guaranteed, then care must also be taken that the dying, for example, do not remain without spiritual help. Or if a civil wedding is possible, no one understands why a church wedding is not possible, among other things. Because everything is politicized, even the shepherds no longer notice the discordant tone in the brutal formulation, baptisms, confirmations, masses, marriages, that is, the sacramental mediation of grace, are forbidden, end quote. Personally, I like to dig at the official reports. He has a point. In many places, you still can't attend any religious service of any kind. But you can go to restaurants, medical Moloch services, gather in public if you respect the two meters of separation, or any number of other things. But churches remain empty. This, in my mind, reveals the real agenda of some of these maniacs, too, as I noted that infamous billionaire George S. stated in a recent statement that I featured in yesterday's video, that we are at a revolutionary moment when the otherwise inconceivable is, not, is now thought to be possible by people with not very good intent. It is with that note that we see that when asked if he'd sign the document again, Cardinal Mueller brushes off the dumb question and instead responds by saying, there's no need to answer absurd accusations or insinuations coming from opinion makers, who frankly have failed in their duty to report the truth. Honestly, I have to say that it is refreshing to see a cardinal of the church standing up for the barest minimum against hostile opinion makers, instead of trying to play kissy face with them in the ruling class. I wish more of them would do so. I know, Cardinal Mueller's not perfect, but this is a good example of a cardinal standing up for the basics of what is right. For that, he deserves our thanks, because so few are doing it. Let me know your thoughts on this. Thank you for listening. I'm Anthony Stein. Ave Maria.